Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fourth grade topic, area model multiplication. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions we see today, or even your own homework, you can always visit me on my Facebook page, at Tutumi Senpai, and tell me all about it there. Today's video is going to have two parts, so leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started! In today's video, we're going to be covering another use of area model multiplication. Now, you may be very good at doing area model multiplication already, and that's great. However, there may be some questions that are maybe not so obvious that you have to use area model multiplication at first glance. So I wanna expose you to another type of question that at first glance, it may look a little confusing, but all it's really asking you is, use area model multiplication to solve this question. However, before we get into our example for today, let's have a quick refresher on what is area model multiplication. Area model multiplication is just another form of multiplication that uses place values. And by using those place values, it can break down your math into much simpler math eliminating the need for a lot of mental math. With the use of this box here, we can break up both our numbers into their ones and their tens place and put them as such. So 12, you're gonna have one 10 and you're gonna have two ones. 13, one 10 and three ones. Now with the area model, you can do much bigger numbers than this, but this is just a simple example. After you break up your number into their place value locations, you simply multiply everything on the side by everything on the top in this way. You're gonna do 10 times 10, you're gonna do 10 times two, three times 10, and then three times two. So everything on the side gets multiplied by everything on the top. And you put the results in these boxes. So 10 times 10 is gonna go here. And we know 10 times 10 is going to be 100. 10 times two is gonna go here. And we know 10 times two is going to be 20. Three times 10 goes here, and we know that to be 30. And then three times two is gonna go here in our last box. And we know this to be six. Once you have all of these, you simply add everything. So it's going to be 100 plus 20 plus 30 plus six. And when you add all of that, that's gonna be your final answer. Whatever this 12 times 13 equals. And we know that to be 156 if you were to add everything. So 12 times 13 is going to be 156. And this is how you do area model multiplication. Once you understand how to use your area model for multiplication, you'll be able to multiply any two numbers. However, what if I said that there's another use for your area model that is not as straightforward as multiplying two numbers? What if you were given a question look just like this for your homework, and all they asked you to do was find the missing numbers? Would you believe me if I said it's gonna be super easy to do that using your area model for multiplication? Well, let's see how. Well, the first thing you wanna do is let's draw our box. So we have a box here. And we want to fill this in as best we can. So we know we have a 24, so we have a 20 and our four, right? We have two tens and we have four ones. And we don't know what this number is. We have a box here. However, we do know there's one 10 here. So we put a 10 here. And then this is gonna be a question mark. We have no idea what that is. Now we simply do the math here. We're gonna fill this in as best we can with what information we're given. So 10 times 20 is going to be what? Well, this is going to be 200. 10 times four is going to be what? Well, this is gonna be 40. Now we don't really know what goes into these other two places, right? However, now let's look back at our question. Do you see anything in common here? We have a four and there is a four inside of our box. So what if this was a zero? And we have two zeros here and we see we have two zeros here. So what if this was a two? That means we're about halfway done with filling in these missing spots, right? But we were given this 36 and we don't know what this is. But we see that 36 is smaller than whatever number this is supposed to be, right? So that means it's going to show up in the smallest box. Our smallest box is going to house this 36. Because this is gonna be a three digit number, it's going to have to be here. So there's gonna be one box 
zero. So we're almost done. We have four times something is going to give us a 36. Well, what is that something? Well, four times nine gives us a 36. So what's nine times 20? Let's see if we can fill in this last box. Nine times 20 is going to be 180. So that last box is an eight. We can put an eight here. And that means that this box has to be the nine that we just found. So we filled in all of these things, but we still have to fill in this last one, which all you have to do now is add all your numbers. 20, 40, 180, 36. Now that is supposed to be 180. It wasn't super clear, but it's 180 and 36. And that's all the numbers you had here. So when we add everything, you see you have six, right? We have three plus eight gives us 11, plus four gives us 15, and we carry our one. One plus one plus two gives us that four. So our final box has to be this five. And our final answer is going to be 456. For this example, we weren't necessarily given our two numbers to multiply. However, we can easily find that if we take our time and utilize our area model. So if you're given a tricky looking example like this, don't just jump in there and try to solve it, but try to understand what it's asking you to really do. And this is just saying, can you use the area model to fill me in? Now, before I leave, I do wanna say that the area model for multiplication is not required in order to fill this in. You can do it another way. However, using the area model for multiplication, it is a little more obvious about your patterns that you have between the two. And if the patterns are more obvious, it may be easier to solve this question. So I hope you have followed today's example and I hope you now know you have another use for your area model multiplication. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today or even your own homework, remember you can visit me on my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you haven't done so already, remember to leave a like. It really helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found the video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I really hope it's helped with your homework, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Two to Me Senpai.